almost le we're almost level in this game with with Warrington. Thirty two Wigan made, which is almost unheard of. It's twice the season average of sixteen per game. Um, this speaks of the relatively clean rooks and good speed of good rook speed of both sides. Lots of this work was done by outside backs too. Both left wingers, for example, had eight dummy half runs. Yeah. Um, so getting involved to do exit sets through dummy half running and Wigan maybe picked up. That's what Warrington do well. If we counter them with that, that'll okay. tire out the same sorts of players. Yeah, that will be bringing it back back at us. Uh, so maybe that tactic worked quite well for Wigan. Um, they're like the the big numbers because I think it's really impressive that we've got to the end of the season and we've got the final game of the season and it's got headline stats like the most carries in a game. Oh yeah, year. it shows how fast the action was. It felt fast. Mm. It was fast, and that's why there were so many. Carries of the ball. There was there was a fairly high offload number in the game, but um, not you know unheard of levels for sure. Mm. Uh, in in terms of the more general scene, Wigan were on top in every key stat. They made more meters at a better average gain. They made more breaks, five breaks to Warrington's two. So criticisms of Wigan's attack and saying Warrington the exciting attack inside. Wigan's defence bottled that up in this one, and actually Wigan's attack was was quite strong. Um, they were the better team tackle success by one percent. Making only giving away two clean breaks and making 96% tackle success against the best attacking side in the league shows how good Wigan's defence is. Um, people will be sick of me talking about how good we are, aren't we? Four fewer errors well, they're made get a break by soon, Wigan. So we're right. Two fewer penalties conceded by Wigan as well. Um, Warrington, in, uh, by the end of the game, obviously, Warrington pushing a little bit towards the end, making a few errors. Warrington made a couple more offloads in the game, but Wigan made the only 40-20. Um, so Wigan... On balance, won the game, won the stats. There you go. So individually, who stood out for us? I've, do you know what? I've broken the mould and just done everyone who hit one of our notes of points that I would normally look for as a minimum standard. Everyone who hit the minimum standards makes it in. I, so did, I did wonder four. why there was quite so many Wigan players involved in the stats. There's a lot of... Week. There's a lot of Warrington ones too. Mm. Well, first of all, we're going to talk about Dan Sargentson with a one try assist, five tackle boss, 31 carries, 276 metres, five successful offloads. That's wrong. It's not 276 metres. I've, I've typed this wrong. 200 and something metres anyway. Yeah. Over 200 metres is a phenomenal yeah. turnout for that young man, isn't it? Shall I... Do some of your other Wigan players while you clarify? No, well, no, because 31, it's 31 carries in the game. That's the interesting thing to pick out. That's why I've started with Dan Sargentson, really. Right. Um, it's the most by a player in a, in a game this year at the top level. <laughs> but Dan Sargentson, as we've sort of talked about how he's battered his body up all year, he's got the seven most individual performances of carries per game. He has the seven he's, he's, highest. He's top seven of anyone. Of every every of, of all the performances. Oh, of, so there's thousands of individual of player performances over the two hundred and over the hundred and seventy nine games that have been played in the season. And of all of those, the top seven have been made by Dan Sargent. The top seven have been made by Dan Sargent. I just Sargent. hope he's getting a good home cooked meal and someone to look after him when he gets home, poor boy. That's hard work. It credit, is, credit to him that's credit to the level of professionalism and his work his, ethic, his desire to win a trophy before he left the team this is you know a lot of times when players leave you leave a touch of resentment or whatever I feel like the two players who are leaving that had already announced they were leaving mm. um, so that we know for sure yeah. were leaving were Sargent and, and Charlie and you can't ask for more than what the two boys did yeah. in, in, in the game and even in the in the season as a whole, really. Josh Charnley is the most underrated winger this season, I think, in terms of performances. Uh, 276 metres. No, it was 276 metres. Holy cow. That might be the most this season by an individual. Though, I, don't, I, don't remember, I don't remember us reading out 270, anything near 276. Well, we might have a hint at that in the we stats round up later. Or something, but... the, 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 sat, the, the stats I've got for, for us later might throw that in. Um, anyway... So that's amazing, Sargentson. That's amazing. Liam Farrell with a try assist, 46 tackles, 10 mark tackles, 5 tackles, 146 metres, 2 clean breaks. More than deserved the man of the match for me, though. As much as what effort Dan Sargentson did, I think Farrell was flawless. Yeah. Peerless, flawless, exceptional. He has been since he came back into the side, but he just does it every time, so you don't talk about it. Mm. But I'm, so I'm so glad he won the award, by quite a landslide in the voting as well. Um, Lewis Tierney with 166 metres, two clean breaks. Josh Charlie with a try and 138 metres. Anthony Gelling with 136 metres. John Bateman with 134 metres, three successful offloads. Sam Powell made 50 successful tackles and Willie Ice had 40 successful tackles. Dominic Crosby, he was the... 
he was probably the third best player for me in this game, outside behind Sergeant well, Farrell, Sergeant, and for, on the Wigan side of the field. Yeah, 115 meters and a clean game from him. He ate over 30 tackles, didn't miss a single one, didn't give away a single penalty, which is good for Don Crosby. Yeah, and no no handling errors either. Um, so phenomenal from him, and made very good meterage in his carries. There was some outstanding performance. There were some brilliant performers as well for Warrington. Of course. Daryl Clark, the try assist, 48 tackles, 142 metres. Possibly their best. The one that snuck in under the radar, I didn't realise how how Im- Im- impressive a performance he had um, until I saw the stats and then that sort of made me think about his instances in the game. And actually there was a few times he did come close to scoring or that sort of stuff. It was Joe Westerman, 53 mm. tackles, 11 marker tackles, 117 metres. A player we didn't talk about being unlucky to miss out on England selection. Well, that's the thing. He is under the radar and he is a fantastic player. And of course, he's been in that England squad before, so it is a surprise really, isn't it? Matty Russell, of course, um, five tackle bus, 178 metres. Chris Hill, always uh, reliable, 122 metres. Tom Lynham, 122 metres. And Ryan Atkins, 110 metres. And... That was uh, the people who hit the nose. Darren Clark go. even did all those numbers whilst going off for the 10 minutes or so that he was off the field for. And what an engine, what a machine, what a, what a threat. Yeah, absolutely. Okay, so we're going to do something a little bit different later on and get a couple of uh, fans on. I won't reveal too much about that now, but stay tuned. Right, so everyone, we've got not one but two uh, listeners guesting on the podcast tonight, and the first of those is one of our resident Wigan fans. You'll know him as at Chris McKeown 1980. We are joined on the phone by Mr. Chris McEwen. Chris, thank you very much for coming on. How does it feel to be on the Super League pod? It's a totally I've ever dreamed of. <laughs> no, it's brilliant. Th- thanks very much for having me on. It's brilliant. No problem at thank all. Thank you. Yeah, thank you for joining us. Just once we've got you on the phone and we've got your voice to uh, to lend some weight to it. How do we pronounce your surname, Chris? Uh, it's Chris McEwen. Chris McEwen. Perfect. Thank you very <laughs> much indeed. That well, you tried to be diplomatic there and half pronounce it. I feel like. <laughs> yeah, I, I, I've, uh, wherever I've been, people have found it different. I'm, I'm happy with. Yeah, it's all right. Oh, oh, oh that's you can tell we won, is right? Happy, the, isn't yeah, he's <laughs> in a really good mood. Okay, so let's get to that then. Let's talk about Saturday evening. Um, give us a flavour of, of of kind of pre-match and who you were with and how you got down to the game and just kind of that that build up. What was your what was your afternoon like leading into the grand final, Chris? Um, not a huge amount to say because I was pretty hungover from Friday night. Um, well, let's so, talk about Friday night. Where, <laughs> where have you been on Friday night, Christopher? Uh, oh, it's, uh, out with a few friends, a bit impromptu, and it ended up we got in after one, as you do. Uh, <laughs> so, I was uh, a bit rough on Saturday. And <laughs> so, no, no, no walking home because you've managed to make the breakfast order at McDonald's there, like Thomas. I wasn't going to No, no. Oh, no, I'm not in Tom's league. So. <laughs> I don't feel like I deserve to be in my league. So, so it was a, <laughs> fair to say a subdued build-up then, as you recovered from the night before. So yeah. <laughs> so yeah. So I uh, drove round to uh, friend's house and suggested it might be safer if he drove the rest of the way, and um, just plod along. Uh, managed to get our lucky car parking space. Fantastic. Well, so we we parked there previously. We parked there twice in four finals. We'd won those two, so I'm not saying it was that was the reason we won, but oh, well, it probably no, played some part. Yeah. We'll, we'll tell you um, what we can get, won't we? The, star, <laughs> the stars aligned. So, where, whereabouts were you sat? Were you sat sort of in the Wigan end, or were you on the t- on the, yeah, the longer touchline? Yeah, behind the posts, um, sort of about twenty, thirty rows back, and sort of in line with sort of where Gildart scored his try. That sort of so on the right hand sort of edge as you looking down the field fantastic so uh, no it was a very decent seat with some yeah strange people around us but how, yeah <laughs> and how did you find the atmosphere in the build up um it was pretty I'd, there were some points where it seemed quite tense and it was like people were singing just to try and get nerves out more than <laughs> anything but then once the game settled down it it, it I say it's, it seemed to pick up quite considerably, and we were just underneath the upper tier, so then the sound just sort of echoes a bit round it, so it holds the atmosphere quite well. So I know it was, uh, it was, it was all right. It was quite a calm 
bit of tension in the air, but that soon went, really. Everyone trying to remember who Feeder were and where they knew this song from. <laughs> oh, yeah. Well, they weren't as bad as Craig Charles. Jeez, he was terrible. He was, <laughs> was Craig Charles there Craig, as well? He did a DJ set. He, he, he hasn't did gone a down DJ there. set. Yeah, it wasn't very good. It wasn't very good at all. Fantastic. Yeah. <laughs> Just, so who were you with then? Who were you, who were you sampling the atmosphere with at that point then? Uh, I was with my two friends, a guy called Steve and a guy called Omar. And uh, say so Steve, a uh, guy who introduced me to Rugby League. Uh, it was just a Wigan Warrington game. He rung me up and said, um, I've got a spare ticket because Omar pulled out. Um, you doing anything tonight? I said no. So I went and that was it. So that was, when was that? About 10, 11 years ago. So I was with him and uh, yeah. I hope Steve so, listens to the Super League pod as well, and Omar. I've, 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 I've asked them, but I don't <laughs> think they did. Well, I've told him I'll be on it, so maybe there's a chance he might, uh, although he, he sits and listens to me in the car on the way to games, he probably doesn't want to hear it again. <laughs> well, perhaps not, but the opportunity to reach you out for being on, on, on you know, Twitter's number one independent rugby league podcast is uh, is not not to be sniffed at. So the uh, game it's the game itself isn't something I want to I want to kind of needle you too much on because I know it's <laughs> something that you're in the moment with. But you mentioned you were sat um, kind of parallel with where or kind of opposite where Gildart scored his try. So I just want to talk about kind of the, the couple of minutes preceding that try where Ryan Atkins obviously at the very opposite end of the pitch from where you are has, yeah. has a no try decision given uh, thanks I think in large part to quite a lot of very just strong gang defending from your mob yeah, and yeah. then you guys go down the other end and, and Gildart gets over the line after the Liam Farrell break so just kind of talk us through what your emotions were at the point of the no try happening and then through to through to Gildart getting the score well, it, it, I, we couldn't see this from where you were the screens bit too small so you couldn't see so you weren't sure whether it was going to be given or not but I, for the whole from about 20 minutes in probably just before they scored even, I don't know what it because I'm usually nervous as anybody watching it but I was just so confident that we were going to win because the defence just looked so good and it was just I just felt it was always going to be a matter of time and just putting a couple of good attacking plays together which we ultimately did it was like waiting on that decision was a bit painful but once we got through that, it was um, no. It was just, uh, so it all just felt like it was a matter of time until we eventually got there. And when you do, it's obviously it's, it's celebrated wildly, and uh, <laughs> there were bodies and limbs everywhere. So, uh, <laughs> as you'd expect. Fantastic. And did you celebrate after the after the fact that after the game and, and you've lifted the trophy? Did you have it in you to go celebrating, or were you were you on strict orders to get home after being a stop out the night before? No, I had to. Um, I had to get back. Well, I didn't get back till ten. I had to go pick my wife up in the train station because she'd been out all day. So mm. I was. Um, no, it was. I just went in, watched the brief highlights again, and just uh, sort of sat there quite content. Really, it was. Uh, no, Fantastic. Um, and and do you think you guys can go again next year? Do you think it's on the cards that you could retain the title then? Oh, no, no doubt with the, the stamp quality of players they've got. Um, I don't think there's, the, there's that much quality, star class quality across any of the other teams. So there's no reason why we can't do it again. No. Retain the resilience in the defence and find some attack, and we'll be unstoppable. Oh, oh yeah, the defence was outstanding. Attacking is still a bit. One thing we did before the game, we were uh, like, we were just I used to have a little go at Sergeant because he's. His attacking kicks are god awful. Yeah. They are terrible. <laughs> and then out of nowhere, he plucks out the, the winning try from a kick from him. And it's yeah, bad, there was, yeah, there was the kick. I think it was right right near the end of the game, the one where he put down the sideline oh. for Ratchford. That was awful, weren't it? Yeah, it was just kicking out of play. Do anything. Yeah. But don't but kick it straight to the fullback. By that time, you'd, forgive it, you'd forgiven and forgotten because he'd, he'd put the one through to win us the game. Yeah, no, it was great. He was super, to be fair to him, all, all game. So, yeah, no, it was excellent. Wonderful. Well, we're, we're delighted that you enjoyed the game as much as you did and came out on top, and we're just as delighted that you joined us on the Super League pod. And, you know, on Mark's behalf as well, thank you very much for your continued support of all our right. endeavours. And, and hopefully, from your point of view, we'll be able to invite you back on this <laughs> time next year to, uh, to talk us through another Wigan victory. What do you reckon? Oh, that'd be great. But uh, thank you very much for having me, and thank you for all the work you do. Uh, it's really appreciated by everyone. No, oh, you're very welcome. All right, nice one. Chris McEwen, thanks very much for joining us. All the best, us. Gosh. 
Okay, so following on from Chris then, I'm now delighted to say we're joined on the line by yet another Super League pod stalwart. And actually this guy, I take my hat off to him for even uh, coming on. This is tremendous sportsmanship. But regular contributor and Warrington fan, Elliot 